That's sophisticated, isn't it? fantastic yeah i know <laughs> yeah well you sent me that audio clip i know it's like oh i gotta use it i know it's it's uh it's our it's our ticket to an instant copyright strike oh yeah i'm well, sure well, i mean i tried to hide it among the i wonder how aggressive amazon so there was a clip the the clip in there about razzle dazzle is from uh the grand tour um which is an amazon show so i wonder how aggressive amazon is with copyright strikes against youtube because it's google content i don't know Probably very. I mean, is. I don't know. Like it was, it was pretty well hidden by the by the track yeah. overlay. We'll hope. We'll hope. Yeah. But so, welcome, welcome yeah, back. I know it's, it's been it's been like six months since we actually recorded. Oh no, it's been less than that. Uh, it's been like three or four months since we actually recorded something, and then uh, I put it out like a month or two ago. Um, yes. Sort of the the the, the lost tapes. Um, <laughs> But that, but that had been recorded like three months or something before I actually put it out. So this one should be out within a reasonable amount of time from today. So the events might actually be current. Yeah. No, yeah. More current than usual. Yeah. It, it, is, it is a new year. It so. is a new year. We're about to go to war with Iran. <laughs> so that's good. Right? And weed's legal. Oh, well, I mean, at and least we, where... And weed is legal. Where weed... In Illinois. You know. Yeah. Um, which... Um, do you see some of the lines? Yeah, they're like around the block. It's unbelievable. And, and these places, so these places aren't like in traditional shopping centers. So they're like, there's they're in like industrial parks. Yeah, like, so there's there's people with there's people like they showed one a couple towns over where there the people were like just down the street of this like industrial park like intersection. So it's just people standing on the side of the road while semis and shit are going by. Yeah. The, these are the type of places that are like right next to the, uh, you know, like Airport. Uh, R- Ricky's tow yard. Oh, well, that too. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah. And they're around, all, all around the block, which I think is, is funny mm-hmm. because, um, it, it's so now don't get me wrong. I'm all for the legalization of marijuana. I'm all for it. I think that it's great in terms of revenue for the state. Um, I'm not going to go buy anything, but I'm also uh, on the on the side of uh, support your local business. Oh yeah. And when <clears throat> people started showing me their receipts and like their thirty percent tax that they're getting on this stuff, like you know. Eighty dollars on a three hundred dollar purchase or something. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So somebody was. I was talking to somebody and they're like, they were talking about how they think that um, they're like, oh, it's gonna be crazy. So many more, so many people are gonna start smoking weed. And I'm like, I don't think so, guys. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, it, nobody's just gonna start smoking weed that day. No. I mean, maybe. Maybe you'll have people that's like, okay, now maybe if that was their only hang up, like it was illegal or or they didn't know the right people to get it, which I find to be difficult, but I mean, difficult to not know somebody who can get you weed. Not, not that it's difficult to get weed because I've maintained this even from when I was in high school, uh, like all the way up, like weed is easier to get than, than booze was in high school. Anyway. Oh, for sure. Because it's illegal for everybody. So your dealer doesn't care if you're 15 or 50, right. like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's funny because now that you see all of these lines, it's like I think people who people who didn't realize how many people smoked weed recreationally, they're like, "Wow, this this is a lot. This is a this is a much larger number than we thought it was going to be." But what I don't understand 
is that if all of the people that are lining up around the block are people that already smoke recreationally, then why do they need to go to a dispensary? It's not that they need to. It's it, Number one, it's a little bit of novelty, right? Number two, have you ever been to a dispensary? You ever been like an into a legal dispensary? No, no. Somewhere? Okay. So it's like, it, it's like Candyland. Like th- there's uh, 50 different kinds. It's like, okay, you're lucky up until the last 10 years, you're lucky if you can get um, any type of edible in the Midwest, right? Mm-hmm. So and if you do, it's like a shitty, gritty, terrible brownie. Like that was the edible from 2010 and earlier. In the last 10 years, people have actually started doing, you, you've actually been able to get edibles more readily like uh, candies or Tootsie Rolls or whatever, right? Um, but you'd only be able to get whatever it was you could get your hands on unless you went out of state to places where it was legal. But if, the dude, in a dispensary, there's not, there's not one kind of gummy. There's not just gummies. They have, they have regular gummies, sour gummies, gummies of different uh, intensities, potency, gummies with, with different ratios of THC to CBD. And then there's five different brands of all of them. There are chocolate bars, there are different flavored chocolate bars. There are weed bath bombs. There are, there's weed lube. Uh, there's weed lotion. There's, there's suckers. There's every, every possible thing you can imagine, including you know, flower, actual weed plant, um, wax, oil, uh, vape cartridges, which if they include vitamin, whatever it was, vitamin E, it'll kill you. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's every different type of, you don't have to settle for whatever it was you could get your hands on. It's like, you know, if you think about the equivalent of imagine when liquor was only people making it in their basements. You mean like prohibition? Kind of. Yeah. Uh, except prohibition, you could still get bottled stuff, but then even then, you didn't know what it was or if it was really what was supposed to be in the bottle or any of that. So it, it was medicine, exactly. Well, you had to get it from Walgreens, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, big pharma. So <clears throat> it, it it's it's like some of it is the um, the novelty of like going to a store and buying legal weed, right? Some of it is selection. You know, it's it's the the availability of different types, um, and the fact that you can actually pick like what you want. You know, so they'll have different uh, sativa, they'll have um, indica, they'll have different different potencies, different strains. You can go in there and say, somebody that we know uh, who was in a uh, just the world's largest dispensary actually, or so it bills itself, recently said, uh, okay, I want two disposable vape pens. Uh, one, I want to be very like happy, uh, uplifting, sort of energetic type. And the other one, I want the scariest shit you've got. Like, okay, cool. And like, they know exactly, it's like exactly what you want, exactly what you need. So, so what we're saying is, is that, I mean, uh, then again, all of that's completely and totally unregulated. So right. it, it could be literally anything, but at least it's better than not having any options or any choice. So what we're saying is, is that the legalization and dispensaries are the Walmart and uh, your local dealer is uh, the farm stand. I don't think so. I don't think it's there yet. Um, I think right now we're in like the, 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 the 30s and 40s of weed where so all the places are little mom and pop shops, but they're also the only choice. Well, I just meant in terms of you go to the dispensaries for the for the. Uh, rows upon rows of choices. Sure. But if you if you're purely smoking weed and you're not looking for edibles and you're not looking for oils and lubes and you know ass creams or whatever, you could put that. You, you could put it anywhere. Yeah, I know. You, you go to your go to your guy. Yeah, I mean, no, nobody's saying. Or at least I'm not saying don't continue to buy from from wherever you have been if that's what you prefer and what you trust. The other thing about um about buying weed i mean i haven't bought weed and i haven't bought weed from somebody who isn't a close friend in like 15 years and even then i the last time i bought weed was probably 10 years ago and and even still um like there was there was a social aspect to it though and sometimes that was wanted and sometimes it was unwanted sometimes like 
you you wouldn't call you would call a certain person over another because you knew that they were all business. Sometimes you'd go to dealers that weren't friends or didn't you know you didn't associate with because it's like here here you go here's your money I'm out right. Other times certain you know I I, I knew a bunch of people who uh, who had this situation where they they don't want to call a specific person because that person will then want to like hang out and smoke with you. It's like dude I just want some fucking weed like. Give me the weed. And this is go. a social visit. Right. Just give just me the weed. weed. It's like in Pineapple Express. The guy's like, he's a fucking linger. He's <laughs> just <laughs> lingering. So it, it's, you know, it's nice, I guess, to be able to have it be some someone that you, because you could, you could still form like trust with whoever it is. They call them bud tenders, but whoever it is at your dispensary, right? Like just, you know, if you have like a, you have an electronics guy or you have a car guy or you have a whatever, like at, that works at a certain place that you trust that you like or your favorite waitress uh, or waiter or whatever somewhere, um, you know, you can, you can develop that same level of like professional trust and relationship as a consumer and a professional um, and, and then leave. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm I, not into it. I haven't been in a very long time. But um, I'm interested. I'm interested in at least going and experiencing it. But I'll wait. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's insane right now. Um, I'll give uh, some statistics uh, that I pulled up uh, for anybody that's interesting or interested. Um, three point two million dollars. Yep. Second in one to uh, day. Second, second to, to Oregon. Colorado. Colorado. Oh, I thought it was Oregon. I, I thought Colorado might have beaten it, but in, 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 in but you got to look at uh, you got to look at density of population. Yeah. Like, I mean, well, I guess that's really low then. It it, it it that it is, but it's a lot for its first day. Yeah. But in comparison to like Oregon and Colorado, I think they beat Chicago, and they have less people. That's what I mean. Is like I, I feel like that's low for or, Chicago. Or well. or we beat them by a little bit. I would have to look it up. But <clears throat> I mean that's, I mean at that pace, which it won't stay that way. But if no. you think about it, I mean that's close to a billion dollars in revenue for the state, um, which I'm all fine for. By me. Uh, it's fine, fine by me. But just I just hope people are aware of the 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 drawbacks. I also am am a tinfoil hat wearer. And the other part of it that, that, that interests me is that the fact that what easier way to dumb people down, to, to, to ruin and get more invested and more, you know, uh, for, for the government than to be like, yeah, yeah, you say, why don't you chill out, smoke a little, smoke a bong, you're fine. Yeah. And they're going to come and they're going to take our guns. Well, <laughs> and and I if would you... have to, I'd have to imagine a large percentage of the weed smoking population and a large percentage of the gun owning population don't overlap. But I'm sure You'd there's a portion surprised. that do, and they can't. What do you mean? You if 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 you go medically or um, recreationally, mm-hmm. and you go to a dispensary and they they scan your license, you can't get a gun. Really? Mm-hmm. Because because. Gun ownership. You can't get a, a FOID card. You nope. Because huh. it's federally federally regulated, and it does it ignores even though it's state law, state approved. It's not federally approved. Right. That's interesting. I'm gonna have to. I have to look that up. Yes. That's interesting. Yep. So so now, um, yeah. But pull it up. Make sure I'm not lying. Because <laughs> I read I read an article from um, uh, a federally Breitbart. Not Breitbart. And I messaged Alex Jones. And he, uh... Uh, so on PolitiFact says no states haven't legislated marijuana users lose their guns. Uh, but I'm, but I'm, nearly every state that is legalized that is also legislated that you lose your right to own a gun if you're prescribed it or buy it recreationally. That's what one person asserted. Uh, do do do. Federal law that predates legalization does prohibit users of controlled substances, including including firearms from possessing marijuana, but we found no evidence that states have legalized marijuana that have legalized marijuana have enacted their own laws to ban cannabis users from owning a gun. Uh, it Basically, this says that there's nothing on the books that says that? 
or they didn't find any. I said they don't. They didn't find. This is Politifact. They said they didn't find any evidence to support that claim, and they rate this Facebook post as false. Oh, I I didn't see it on Facebook. Oh well, that's what that's just you know my one initial googling says. Aww. I mean, so you know, you know what? Oh, <laughs> go ahead, Jinx. Uh, I was gonna say it wouldn't be a, a razzle dazzle. Uh... Uh, podcast if we didn't have some sort something of technical didn't, thing something didn't die yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah I mean I, I don't know so when you go to a dispensary they do um, they do scan your license when you go to a dispensary at least in the so I've only been to dispensaries in uh, Denver and Las Vegas and they do scan your license uh, at both I don't I guess I never really thought about what they do with that information I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it goes into some sort of database. Yeah, and... but my question was, who would they share it with? Um, so, like, let's say, I mean, in Illinois, they, you know, states could say, or the state could say, in order to give you a permit, you have to agree to share your list of customers with us on a regular basis. And then Illinois could absolutely cross-reference that with FOID card owners and revoke your FOID card. And for those outside of Illinois, which I don't think we have any, but... Uh, a FOID card is a uh, firearm owner's ID card that's required in the state of Illinois in order to purchase uh, and own a gun. So, y- y- I mean, they absolutely have the means to do that. Um, but I don't know. So here's, here's what the Illinois State Police, apparently, because um, this, is, this is part of an article that was off of some local, I have never, Freeport? I don't know. But this is this this is kind of echoes of what I was I was what I read. Um, Illinois State Police will not revoke a FOID card based solely on a person's legal use of adult cannabis or use of adult use cannabis, whatever. Pursuant to both state and federal law, a person who is addicted to or a habitual user of narcotics is not permitted to possess or use firearms. A FOID card will be revoked by the Illinois State Police where it is demonstrated that an individual is addicted to or is a habitual user of cannabis. It will also be revoked for those who violate certain provisions of the Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act, according to the ISP, Illinois State Police. So The use of cannabis is still considered to be illegal by the federal government, and the purchase of a firearm from a federally licensed firearms dealer is governed by federal law. All right, so all the, if all the information is made available to everybody... Then yeah, govern. I mean, okay. So all firearm firearms dealers are licensed by the federal government. So the FFL FFL is a uh, is a firearms license basically to receive, transfer, and and sell guns. Um. So yeah, they could totally deny you if they knew you were, uh, if you if you had used marijuana. Right. Um. That doesn't stop gun shows because you're transferring from person to person, basically. Correct. Um. But. I guess the question is, number one, so the first part of that, what does the Illinois State Police define as addicted? Meaning... Well, see, the, 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 this is the problem with, you know, state law, or law in general, is it's vague. It, it allows, you know, it, it allows for government to make that determination. There, there is no... Oh, right, so it's like, let's say they are sharing information <clears throat> with the state police and... If you purchase weed more than once a month, or if you purchase weed for three consecutive months, right. one, once a month for three consecutive months, now you're legally addicted and we can revoke your FOID card. You know, I think there is somewhere, and I'll have to research it, that says if you've done it more than once within like, like a, like a six-month period or something weird, then you're, you're considered a, a habitual user. Like it's something outrageous. Um, I'm sure there's legal precedent. I just don't know it. But <clears throat> the the th- I think my question is is what are the dispensaries doing with my information yeah, when they scan my ID? Know. Where what does it do? Right. Like if it's going into like a, a a registry or a database, then you're all stupid. Oh yeah. You're all stupid. It's a ploy. Don't do it. Don't give your information to a to a, 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 a federal database guised as a well, weed shop. That's the thing. Is that, that's yeah. I'd wonder. You know, we 
we know somebody who works at a dispensary, actually. Um, the next time I see her, I'll have to ask her. Yes, I would love to know because if if the the whole the whole point of I, I'm not going to say drug use, but the whole point I, I I feel is is anonymity, right? Like you know, you, you you used to go to your dealer. He doesn't give a fuck what your name is. He doesn't give a fuck what your you, who, who your wife is or whatever. It's just a, a transaction. Mm-hmm. And now what you're doing is you're bringing in all of this other red tape involved. And I don't know what that was, but, and, and you don't even know where it's, people are, people aren't asking questions. I think, what are you doing with my info? Yeah. I think the, the, I don't know. I think legalizing weed at the state level has a ton of problems. I think it's a good thing to do, but it has a ton of problems. And one of them is the fact that it's still illegal federally, which means that, like, so from back from, from back when I was uh, in the finance industry, and by that I mean back when I was a lowly peon <laughs> at a local branch of a bank, um, you couldn't take money from um, places that, that did business in recreational or, or medical marijuana. So even though it was legal, even though dispensaries were legal, for medical purposes in the state of Illinois, um, we couldn't open like a business account for that business. As far as the state's concerned, perfectly legitimate business, has a storefront, has a business license, they pay their, their state taxes, all that, right? But for the federal government, it's, it's illegal. So you can't, you, can't, you can't pay federal taxes on that money because it's, Ill, it's an illegal enterprise as far as the federal government's concerned. And that means that the money federally is all ill-gotten drug money. And so the bank I worked for, you can't deposit it there. You can't create an account for that business because the source of the funds is illegal. And the bank effectively becomes liable for laundering money um, at that point, la- laundering drug money. And so they can lose their, their you know, um, FDIC uh, insurance. And so you, you just can't do it. And that's and it's still it's still the case now. Right. And now that it's even becoming larger and larger, like I think of all the dispensaries I've been to, and I haven't been to a great many. I think it's I think I've been to like three. Um, only one of them took credit, and the way that they did it is they can they can't take credit directly because the credit card vendor is in the same boat. They can't process transactions for an illegal business. Um, so what they did was they would sell you a gift card. Think about like a green dot money card. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'd sell mm-hmm. you a gift card on credit, and then they would take the money from the gift card. That's the only way that they could actually, quote unquote, accept uh, credit or debit because they can't do it directly. So like, it's, it's, a, it's got a lot of problems as far as how does it grow and like how does it scale. Um, because beyond a certain point, like I said, one of the, it was a documentary a couple of years ago. One of the guys was like, the biggest problem we have is what to do with all the cash. What do you do? With it? You can't right. put it in a bank. Mattress. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> what, what do you do with it? <laughs> some, some guy that looks like uh, uh, um, the dude who <laughs> takes, takes home a sack of money with a dollar sign on it yeah. on the side. He just, he just stuffs it under the mattress. I mean, yeah. I mean, what, what do you do? I mean, that's so, got to be a huge, like, just a huge amount of cash. Yeah. Well, yeah, what do you do with that money? Right. And, and then and then from that point... How do you pay your bills with exactly. it? Exactly. How do you, how do you pay <laughs> how do the you, rent for your building? How do you pay your employees? Because you have to take out income tax. Right. How, 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 do, you, how do you do any of that? This is, this is, you know what, I'm against this now. I don't like it. I mean... It's, it's fishy. It's, it smells fishy. It's... Federal, super sketch it's federally prohibited super sketch i, don't I like think it. i think a lot of the problems with the the whole the whole situation would go away if the federal government legalized it that's never going to happen but if they did but if they did if they did the other thing you'd have to look at now is a federal marijuana tax because the, the federal government's not going to legalize it for no reason for nothing yeah, yeah we're not they're not going to do it for free well you know after looking at the 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 uh state taxes that that everybody's raking in the, the government's probably like, yeah, oh, no, yeah, we'll just impose another 30% tax. Yep. And then your, your, your $200 purchase is, is, is going to be taxed and you're going to pay $120 yep. on your, uh, in taxes on your, your, your purchases. Yeah. I'll take one seventy five dollar joint, please. <laughs> 
That's that's what it's going to turn into, and people are going to do it. Yep, and and it's I mean good if it's if they're if they're willing. It's not like see the thing is is like weed isn't one of those drugs where it's like well they need it to live. Like no no no, you're you, if you didn't have it. Like you'd be fine. You'd, you'd survive. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad for people who can't afford marijuana anymore, if it ever comes to that. Because there's always going to be an illegal market. Because the illegal market, the prices aren't going to go up, right? Uh, it, it's it's if anything, the prices in the illegal market are going to go down to continue to uh, push people, you know, to to draw in people for doing that. And the other thing is, is that because it's legal. Uh, legal at the state level now and if you get busted with weed on you how's the how's the cop or whoever gonna know that it's legal or illegal like as a consumer right yep. i i have i have you know um i think it's an ounce is the legal amount i don't know but i have half of the legal amount whatever it is but i bought it from uh uh shlomo my my favorite uh jewish <laughs> delicatessen and uh pot dealer right so how are they going to know? They're not going to know. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, do I, do I constantly have to, to carry around? Do I have to keep it in its brand package? Like, how would they ever know? I, 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 have, uh, I did a little research real quick because I was very interested on how dispensaries pay their rent. And, what, what the, and this is an article from the American Bar Association. Okay? And I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but, but one of the subsections is subleasing. Okay. So you've you've got a tenant, mm-hmm. right? That 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 pays the landlord, and then they sublease in cash to, to the, the dispensary. The dispensary. So okay. you, as an individual, mm-hmm. can pay rent right. from your personal account, and you sublease it to your company right. to pay in cash or something along those lines. Um, and then there's this whole thing on availability of insurance, like, like computation of rent. Cause now a lot well, of these dispensaries are getting gouged. Yeah. But what about, let's think about that. You mentioned insurance. What about like liability insurance if a customer's in there and they slip and fall Slip and fall and break a glass case or something? Oh, you're done. Yeah. Like, are, did they not have insurance? Is that, is that? No, I think what it is, is that, um, well, let me see what it says. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're like going balls deep in the, the dumbest, nerdiest, uh, logistical aspects of this instead of just reveling in the free the free weed well the legal that's weed. because that's because that's what those sheep are doing right the sheep are lining up around the block wake up sheeple and 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 trying to oh yeah yay oh god and waving their flags and and this is a, a brave new world and nobody's asking questions Nobody's uh, looking just, looking it, into the logistics. It's of just all logical this. curiosity on my part. Like, yeah. I, I just don't know how you do any of this. Right. It's very fascinating because it's such a it's such a a weird sector of um, like privatized business. Like, how do you how does this even well, work? I guess you know what you know. I was just thinking in my head of another example that, like, what what would another example be? And and the only one I can think of uh, is like. Uh, prostitution in um what whatever county not las vegas but the, whatever county henderson henderson yeah henderson county? or whatever's outside H- of. henderson's a city but anyway in in that county in las vegas where prostitution's legal but it's still illegal i i guess i wonder if prostitution's a federal crime or a state crime but like even still like how do you what do you do for for money for taxes for like you you're gonna go get a loan Right. Say you get a loan on a, on a car or a loan on a house. You want to go buy a house. You are the manager of a dispensary. You make, you know, before maybe you were making, you know, 50 grand. Now you're making 90. Right. So you want to move. You want to go buy a house, whatever. Right. Um, and I have no idea what managers of dispensaries mean, but yeah, I mean, whatever. It's all cash money, though. <laughs> right. So so let's say you want to go do that. Like and you have to apply for a loan at a bank that is federally regulated. And they they look at your income and say, nope, can't do it. They, well, okay, where's your where's your last two years tax returns? Well, you can't. I mean, can you file that on your if if you're not the owner, because technically you just work for a company doing something. Like I don't know how fucking. I works. don't know, man. It says here that um, you know, while insurance for the marijuana industry is becoming more widely available, an insurance company may not hesitate to deny a claim based on the fact that the claim arises out of an illegal use. And is therefore not covered by the insurance policy. So 
the insurance company who, I mean, they're in the business of making money. They're not in the business of paying out claims. Right. You know, someone slips and falls at, at a dispensary and they're just going to assume, oh, well, it's a well, dispensary. They were, they were on drugs. They were high. Right. Sorry. Not covered. So then at, at that point, what's the point? Right. Right. Um, so yeah, that's crazy. I, you know, I just, <sighs> sheeple wake up. <laughs> This is a ruse, man. See, the funny, the funny thing is, though, is that most of this doesn't affect. It doesn't affect anybody but the owners of the businesses. Really, this doesn't affect any of the people no, on the ground. I know, but it, but it does affect them in terms of like, like I said before, what, what, what are they doing with your information? What, 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 what is the actual repercussions? Yeah. You know, federally, <clears throat> statewide. Oh, uh, well, I guarantee. Well, okay. I, I'd say two things about it. One, I'm willing to bet that if the federal government does have access to that information, that you can basically kiss your chances of ever working for the federal government or getting a federal government contract goodbye. Like bad, Ooh. like bad example. But think about think about Edward Snowden, right? right? Edward Snowden worked for the NSA and the CIA, but only directly for very short periods of time. The rest of it was as a contractor for Dell, Booz Allen, like other companies. And as part of that, had to do background checks and get clearances for the government. So I'm saying, like, you know, let's say you're you're in a state where it's perfectly legal, and your your employer, your direct employer, whoever it is, is fine with it. But then they go to get a government contract and can't do it. Yep, because you know you have you've you've partaken in something that's legal where you live, but illegal in the country you live in. Um, and the other thing is like, and what about like federally, like federal, like what about programs? Oh yeah, like, like I, I mean most yeah, I mean it, it's like if they they haven't, but that that whole like you know drug test people before um like Medicaid and and mm-hmm. stuff like that, like they could be yeah, absolutely pull your information, be like. Sorry, nope. you are engaged in a, a federally uh, illegal activity. Uh, you will no longer be receiving benefits. See, the question is: is is somebody somebody is going to sit down in you know in a boring little cubicle somewhere and is going to have two spreadsheets open, and one of them is going to be how much money would we save if we kicked all of these people that we think might be using drugs off of these programs? The other spreadsheet is going to say, how much money would we make if we just legalized it and taxed the piss out of it? And then kick people off the federal Right, right. right. And then, and then <laughs> what if we did do both? <laughs> I just don't like the idea of giving my no. information to anybody. I, I agree. I mean, so they, they check your ID um, to make sure you're 21, <clears throat> obviously. But they, they do scan, they scan it, it as well. I mean, but Jewel does that. Jewel scans your ID. Not when I go to Jewel. Absolutely. When you when you buy when you if you're buying something uh, like alcohol. Or oh, when you like buy that? alcohol. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't buy alcohol at Jewel. Okay. Well, okay. But what I'm saying is other other not seemingly innocuous places. Lots of places scan yeah, your ID. Nobody's scanning my ID. If somebody asks to scan my ID, I'll be like, No, you're not scanning my ID. The TSA has you put your ID on the little scanner thing as well. I don't know if they keep a copy of it, but I use my passport. Why is that better? I don't know. And besides, I would I I don't have a problem. What? I don't have a problem with the TSA sending my information to the government. I'm just saying. Um, I guess I guess it's all about what it's tied to, right? Like, I don't care if Jewel tells the federal government that I'm buying beer. I would care if you know uh, an underground uh, dog fighting ring. Uh, recorded all of its all of its customers and sent them sent them to the, the federal government. Actually, I would think I would hope an underground dog fighting ring would do that and send it to the federal government because people who do dog fighting are, are the worst scum scum Just on earth evil. Um, I guess I'm okay. I'm okay. Well, with I guess it. like like porn like Pornhub. If Pornhub had you type yeah. in your your driver's license every time and I'm then like, they sent what? they sent your specific choices and genres and watch time to to the federal government. I, I don't think I would be okay with that. I wouldn't I'm not okay with any any place scanning or copying or taking any information of mine that they I don't feel that they need. No. Like a dispensary, they should be checking licenses. Yeah, to make right? sure you're 21. Exactly. They shouldn't be scanning my license. Right. Now if they're scanning a license that that is going into like a privatized, like a customer database, customer or database, yeah. or 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 something along those lines. I mean, not to not to denigrate all of them, 
um, because there's a lot of really intelligent IT people specific. So this is actually something I was going to say a second ago is that Obama, when he was in office, said it was hard to hire um, really good IT personnel because of their ban on um, marijuana, because they won't hire people who test positive for marijuana. Um, so that leads into my second point of, I know plenty of very talented IT people that do also smoke marijuana, but aside from them, how secure do you think the database run by a bunch of fucking potheads? Oh, well, of course be? not. I mean, no, I, <laughs> I mean, mean th- th- that's so true. Even, even if it is a private database, um, cause, cause there are some, some, um, there are some bars that mm-hmm. will scan a license, but that goes that that just reaches out and verifies the information that's already existing, right? Mm-hmm. So it just reaches out to verify that the the ID is valid, and then either comes up green, yes, or red, this is a fake kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that I'm okay with. What I mean, why? Because th- that's that that's that is um, comparing data that already exists. Yeah, but that's also telling them that you're there. Correct, and I'm at that that part I'm okay with. Okay. For in that scenario, I'm just saying that I said I'd never let people scan it. But if I go to a bar, it's fine because I'm okay with that. No, but I'm saying so. Let's say let's say a dispensary but did the same exactly, thing. Exactly. Oops. Exactly. Then you're telling them the location, and that's right. that's what I don't like. It, right. I don't know and, if and the difference is because I, it's it's federally illegal. But but what I'm saying is 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 that then that's the part I don't know. Is it a simple you know transfer of is the information captured is the question because if it's just a dispensary sending out hey is this valid yeah. yes yeah, it it's, is it's, it all depends who's logging it or, or if, if, or if, if there's logging, logging. so if there's but logging just, but also, and i have to assume that there is just being there isn't because uh, i've been in I, like i said i haven't i haven't bought weed in like 10 plus years i've been to a number of dispensaries in the last couple of years <sighs> i haven't bought anything i just go there with the people that i'm with because they're gonna buy stuff mm-hmm. um and I, I'm no, uh, you know, I'm not immune to the fact of, that it's slightly a novelty as well. So I like looking around and, and seeing what's out there. But I haven't bought anything at any dispensary I've ever been to. But I've been there, and they've scanned my licenses at multiple dispensaries at all of the ones I've been to. So yeah, and that's the other thing is that okay, so your license gets scanned. That's not proof of purchase, right? Exactly. Right? So, oh man, shady. Sketch City, man. I think they. I think they actually. Okay, so the dispensaries I've been to, they scan your license up front before they let you in the door. Then when they pair you up with a like a person, because it's like a one to one you with a with a weed dealer person who works there, um, they scan your ID again at purchase. I think. So, I don't remember. It's been a while. Well, see now. Now we're starting to get into a uh, an area of. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, can't think of it. Like when you have enough evidence to convict. Plausible deniability. Well, you know. The, oh, you, that's the other one. That's the other one. It, it, it's 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 enough information for somebody to infer that you've made a purchase. Sure. Right. Um, I don't know. I would like to. I would like to know if if that information is being logged. And the, something tells me the dispensaries probably don't even know. Yeah, but I, you know, it, it maybe in like six months when some of the novelties worn off, can people go, start going, you know, hopping yeah. in the paddy wagon. Well, I, I was going to say I can go there and and talk to talk to somebody, yeah. but I'll talk to. I don't think the person that we know um, would necessarily know the answers to all these questions, but she might know some of them, or she might be able to ask. So I'll ask her the next time I see her. I don't know when that's going to be, but yeah, I'll ask her because this is you know. I'm telling you, tinfoil hat is is peaked. I don't trust it. No. Especially in Illinois. I don't trust anything out of Illinois. No. And, you know. Especially with, with it's amazing that, that this is happening even though, the, like, Bruce Rauner is the governor. Wait, is Bruce Rauner the governor still? Did he lose? No, Who's our what's, governor? What, uh, what's his face? Oh, uh, you're right. Pritzker. Pritzker. Yeah. Never mind. Chub Chubbo. My, my mind went back in time, like... Three years. Yeah, Chubbo Pritzker. That makes more sense now. Yeah, because he wants the the tax. He wants the money from it, which yes. is f- which is fine. Honestly, and I'm I, not against see, it. See, here's the thing. I'm f- I'm fine with with the taxation of it for two for with the, the gouging of it because for two reasons. One, it's not something that people need to live. Right. 
right? Uh, and two, it doesn't really affect me. It doesn't. Because I don't buy it. Now, now, I will say that taxation is theft. Sure. But since that's going to be a thing, I mean, I'm against everything being taxed. Yeah, but, but at, least, at least the place we live will now have more money to waste in different areas. Did you know that, that more people have left Illinois oh, yes. in this decade? than any other state yep. ever it's it's i mean look at like illinois population trends it is unbelievable and and i mean i've been saying it for a long time you know um a lot of the things that that i think we deal with now as we get older we probably weren't cognizant of in our early 20s mm-hmm. but man this state sucks yeah. it's the worst it's it's really it's really, I mean, there's just, just a couple of people that we know in the last year moved to Indiana. Indiana. I mean, where we live, um, realistically, where we live is, is very close to Indiana because we live like I mean, in the direct up. south of Chicago. Yes. Um, so from net rate of migrations from 2001 to now is 6.5% down. Like 6.5% of the population left. Yeah. I mean, and that's a pretty big number when you think about the, the population size of Illinois and just the Chicagoland area. Yeah. But but I was, you know... It's um, the s- six years in a row the, uh, that the, Illinois has, has lost. So this, this article was published January 1st uh, of 2020, and it went down by 51,250 people in 2019, or 0.4%. Since the turn of the decade, Illinois has lost more residents than any other state with a drop of 159,700 people or 1.2% of its population. That crazy. It is crazy. But, you know, when you look at what's happening in Illinois and, and you look at, like, just, just the staggering amount, of, you know, the, the difference in taxes and everything, just... 20 minutes east. I mean, I don't like Indiana. Oh, yeah. I, I don't like Indiana. I hate Indiana. But, but you... in Indiana, you know, there's, there's no, there's no um, sales tax on food. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it's awesome. But as for some, from somebody, from someone who lives somewhere where you pay whatever your regular sales 8. tax 7. is, 10%, right. whatever it is, uh, on food, it's crazy. Um and they're, the property taxes there are next to nothing. Now, the public schools and the roads and, and the services there are all just third world. Right. Um, but, you know, your taxes are, are less. And that's one of the things is that now that I have the, the, uh, the razzling, um, the schools are super important to me now. So, yeah. I mean, it doesn't justify what I pay in oh, property taxes no, or, or sales will. tax or any of that shit. But, you know, it's one of those like necessary evils because the realistically, the, I mean, I don't know, unless I wanted to move to like the middle of nowhere, Michigan, uh, Indiana or Michigan. I do want to move to Michigan, but so not do I. right now. Actually, I want to move to Memphis, but. Oh my God. You and uh, our, our friend. Um, yeah. I think, I think he wants to move to Nashville though. Here, you're right. He does want to move to Nashville. Um, which I'm fine with Nashville, but because um, that's probably one of the most fun I've ever had in my life was at Nashville. That was. I guess I I, I must have just I must have just went with the. I, you I, mean, went, I know you I went, went with the wrong people. I know I went with the wrong people, but I'm saying like it must. I didn't think that the margin would be that different. <laughs> no man, you go yes. with me. You yeah. go with me. We would have went. Can we can we fly? Yeah. Okay. I just driving 16 hours in a couple of days is like. I drove straight through one day. Yeah, I know. What I'm saying is eight hours there, eight hours back. It's like if you're gonna only gonna go for a couple of days, like right. if you're gonna go for four days, sixteen of, or two days, sixteen of those hours is driving. Yeah, but don't you don't you like the 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 fun of driving and like listening to music? No, you're, and going through. I do, you're right, I do, but it's the drive back that I don't like. That's why. That's why I always drive back. Actually, that, like was, New York. that was true. New York. You were asleep 80% oh of the time. Oh, my God. Which is, I was literally slapping myself to keep myself awake. I was literally, because I, I drove, on the way back, I drove like the first hour yeah, and a half. Yeah, hour and a half, and two I was, hours. I was literally just. And I was like, okay. I was like, okay, sweetheart. Let's. let's. And I, and I had to, I had a nap. Switch, switch I had, spots. I had to do it. And then we had the most amazing fried chicken. 
ever. Oh, God, it was so good. It was amazing. I that uh, side note, the Nashville hot chicken mm-hmm. in Nashville, unbelievable. The one that I had at the Fry the Coop or whatever, excellent. It was one of the hottest things I've ever eaten, which I expected. Mm-hmm. But I had the the hot, and then there was like crazy and insanity. There was like two levels of hot higher. We need to go there. Wait, there's two levels higher than the one that you had? Yes. I think so the, for for context, I got a text message the other day with a picture of a chicken sandwich and it, and you said it was ghost pepper and habanero? Yeah. And there's two levels higher than higher that. Higher than that. With each level they add another pepper. You know, you want to try you want to try something. It's not the hottest thing I've ever eaten. If you want to try something really hot, are those Korean fire noodles? Those Korean... Oh, the ones that you got online? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I got them at the Korean store around the corner. From oh, yeah. Oh, that's what I meant. That's yeah. what I meant. Um, my, uh, so my mom was in for, for uh, Christmas and New Year's, and she was staying here. And uh, I one night, because she's, she's a vegetarian, which I don't agree with, and she loves meat. She just decided to be a vegetarian at one point. Anyway. I mean, it's the cool thing to do. Um, so she's like, yeah, you know, what do you, what do you, she just wanted, wanted a snack. I'm like, well, I have these Korean fire noodles. She's like, well, do you have any just regular ramen? I'm like, yeah, I mean, they're regular ramen. Just don't, just don't use the sauce. And she's like, oh, okay. I'll use, I'll use a little bit of the sauce. I'm like, oh, okay. Just be warned. And, uh, she, she opens the little sauce packet and I'm thinking, I'm telling her like, put just a little, a little just dab. A little and she like, bit. she, she squeezes it and it just, and like half of it goes into there. And I'm like, well, oh my God, that's too much. She's like, no, it'll be fine. She stirs it up. Turns it up and she smells it and she starts coughing. That's how and you she know. sits. She sits down. She takes a bite. And she's like, "Oh, this is good." She takes another bite and then for the next like hour, she's just. <sighs> <sighs> but she she handled it like a champ. She's like, "Yeah, it was really good." She handled it like a champ. But I was I I warned her. I'm like, "It's really hot. It's really spicy, but it is delicious. Uh, it's actually good if you so if you make those noodles and then you have some like white rice." And you sort of add the noodles to the rice to just sort of disperse the sauce a little right. bit more. Because um, the flavor of the sauce is really good. It's just you want it on more stuff. <laughs> you don't want it I so want more of, I want more of condensed. the thing. Yeah, I want more of the thing that, that absorbs the sauce. You know, it's good if you, you know, then you lay it on top of a loaf of bread. Yeah, just a whole, no, you, you, you ever see one of those, those, uh, those like delish videos where they hollow out a whole loaf? Yes. You do that and then it's stuff a, it all back in. It's a bread boat. Yeah, it's a it's a Korean Korean fireboat. <laughs> Patent pending. Uh, Korean the fire Co- boat. the Korean fireboat. Yep, <laughs> I think I saw that in a movie once. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I think we're yeah. We're, I think we're about there. We're good. You know. Well, this was this was fun. This was less, or this was uh, we, we talked about stuff I didn't even think we were going to talk about. Oh, wait. I wanted to do something on the Dazzle Pad, but I don't know well, if I can. Hey, let's see. Let's see if it completely shorts out USB again. <laughs> I'm going to pause while, you, while we get this configured. Okay. So, then, all right. Um, yeah. So we took a little break because I wanted to, to freestyle a little, a little stuff here. Um, I mean, it's, it's not my best, but. Technical challenges overcome. Yes. Um, so uh, do you want to go through the rigmarole before we do that? Yeah, so uh, we are on uh, Spotify, uh, The Razzle Dazzle Show. We are on iTunes, The Razzle Dazzle Show. We are on uh, YouTube, um, also The Razzle Dazzle Show. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a website, Mm -hmm. therazzledazzleshow.com. We are on Twitter, at R-A-Z-Z-L-D-A-Z-Z-L show. is very active on Twitter. Yeah, I do things occasionally. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. I'll play us out. Bye.
I mean, I really didn't have a way to end it, so. Okay, well, that worked. It was fun, right? Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye.